racing cars to racing planes. 145, 146, 147, 148, 149, 150 winds of the propeller. The plane is ready. How about you? You are? Okay, here we go. Ready, set, go. Wow, look at that. Up to the ceiling and down again. I wonder if you've ever tried a rubber band propelled plane. They're really quite simple. They have an engine, a very good engine, that consists of just one rubber band. There we are. And when you wind the propeller in one direction, it twists the rubber band, and when that untwists, it drives the propeller in the opposite direction. And if you plan it carefully, you can plan it so that when it untwists, the propeller spins in this direction, so that it actually cuts through the air and pushes air backwards. And the air rushing backwards pushes the plane forwards. Let's see if this plane will take off by itself. Once again, 150 winds. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 140, 141, 142, 143, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 150 turns. The plane is ready for another launching. This time, doing it all by itself, starting on the ground. Let's see if it can actually take off. On your mark. Get set, go. Well, it did. Did you see it actually lift up off the ground? And it did that not only because the propeller was driving air backwards, but also because of something that the wings were doing. What do you think is more important in a plane to enable flight, propeller or wings? Tell you what, we'll try this one without its wings. We'll take the main wing off and also that tail plane, the little wing at the back. And once again, we'll set the motor in action by winding the propeller 150 times, and we'll see what happens. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 140, 141, 142, 143, 144, 145, 146, 147, 148, 149, 150 turns. And so the motor is now wound with the same tension as it had in the previous flights. Will it get off the ground? Make up your mind, see if you're correct. Here we go. On your mark, get set, go. <laughs> what a mess. And of course it's a mess because the wings are absolutely essential for the flight of the plane. The propeller's important, so are the wings. Have you ever noticed on real planes and model planes that the wings are almost always curved on the top. If you look at them from the side, you'll notice that they're flat underneath, curved on the top. Usually the leading edge is rounded, trailing edge is quite thin, sometimes pointed and sharp. That curve on the top of the wing is absolutely critical. It's a little bit like this curve on the piece of cardboard that I hold there. If I turn on this fan, watch what happens to the piece of cardboard, which is really quite heavy. Can you see what's happening already? It's starting to lift, and it's doing that because air rushing past the top of that curve causes a low pressure. Lower pressure up here than underneath, and so the paper is actually pushed up. That's a lifting effect on the piece of cardboard, and it's exactly the same effect that you get on the wing of a plane, whether it be a model plane or a real plane. What I'll do now with this very wing is to place a little pin in the front of the centre of the wing, like so, and another one in the back. Then I'll have a little seesaw device that'll go backwards and forwards. Now if I hold that in front of my mouth and blow just a very soft puff of air straight at the front of the wing, what do you think will happen? Watch this. See that? It lifts up very quickly. And if I put the wing in a vertical position, what's going to happen now if I blow a puff of air? Remember, that's the curved surface there, so there'll be fast rushing air going around there. What's it going to do? Low pressure. And this time, the wing tilts in that direction, towards the low pressure, towards the curve. What happens if I place the wing completely upside down and now puff the same amount of air across the surface of the wing? Here we go. And in fact, the wing moves downwards this time, and it does that because the air is now rushing underneath the wing, forcing the wing down. OK, with that amount of knowledge, what's going to happen if we insert the very same wing in the very same plane upside down? Can you think of how this will affect the flight? While you're making up your mind what will happen, 
We'll get that in position and also the little tail plane in position. We'll make that upside down as well because that's the same sort of shape. It was flat underneath, now it's flat on top. Now it's curved underneath and the main wing is curved underneath. Once again, 150 wines are needed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 140, 140 141, 142, 143, 144, 145, 146, 147, 148, 149, 150 turns of the rubber band. So now we're ready to launch the plane with upside down wings. What do you think will happen this time? You think it'll take off? You think it'll take off as well as it did before? Make up your mind and let's see what happens. On your mark, get set, go. Skims along, hugging the ground, just like a racing car. Years ago, when they built racing cars, they had powerful engines, streamlined bodies, big wheels. They could go very fast. But there was always a danger of actually becoming airborne, taking off when they're accelerating or going around corners and actually leaving the road. That could be quite dangerous. These days when they build racing cars, they actually have on them things like upside down aeroplane wings with curves underneath. They have them at the front, at the back, and even the undersurface of the body is curved so that as the air rushes past, those things act as upside down wings and make the racing car hug the road, which is the safest place to be. Have a look at these racing cars.